Hi, yes, my name is Brad Lackey. I am a driver trainer for Marion County Public Schools. I'm also a certified national driver trainer. And today what we're going to attempt to show you are the new methods and requirements of a CDL pre-trip inspection of a Kentucky school bus. This particular bus is a 2018 model international bus, which is a little bit different than a Bluebird and a Thomas bus, but today we're going to focus just on this international style bus of 2018. We will be starting the inspection from the inside, which is now a new requirement. Okay. Right now we are going to attempt to do what they call an LAB 123 air brake test. LAB stands for leak alarm button. 123 stands for the first thing we do is checking for leaks. Second thing we're going to do is check for the alarm. And the third thing we're going to do is check for the park brake button. Always remember to have the key in your pocket at all times during the inspection. But right now we're going to use this key to begin the inspection. So I've inserted the key into the admission. We'll turn the key one time to the right. And before I do that, I have to remember, recall to say we have to set out your wheel chalks. But since we're on level ground, wheel chalks are not necessary. So we'll turn the key one time to the right. We turn off this fan. So what we'll do now is we're going to push on the park brake button. After the initial drop of air loss, and as you'll notice, we are losing just a little bit of air. When that stops, that'll be when we'll time for one minute, no more than two PSI loss in that minute. So starting now, we will be timing for a process for one minute. And just for the sake of time, we're just going to say that a minute has expired. And if you'll notice, we did not have any more air loss. Right now, we're going to put my right foot on the brakes. After the initial drop, and when that stops, we should have no more than three PSI loss in that minute. If you notice, the air hands have stopped moving, so we'll time it for one minute. As we do, we want to make sure that we have no more than three pounds of loss in that minute. And as I'm looking both back and forth between my timing and the gauge, we have none. Now I'm going to attempt to pump my brake pedal, and somewhere around 60 PSI, we should have an audio light, and we should have an audio alarm to come on, which tells me there is a low air situation. If you notice, we have an audio alarm, and we got a light that has come on. I'm going to continue pumping the brakes. Somewhere between 45 and 20, my park brake button ought to be reactivated. So in doing so, <clears throat> if you notice, the park brake button did pop out, and I also have a park brake light indicator that came on as well. We are now going to turn the bus off, and what we are now going to do is what they call a safe start. By doing a safe start, I want to turn my key one time to the right, at this time, I want to look and make sure that my ABS light has come on and goes out. My heated engine coil light has come on and went out, and it did. And as soon as my check engine light goes out, my bus would then be safe to start. And it did, so I've got to put my foot on the brake, make sure I push it in neutral, and I'll start the bus. The bus did start, so we're going to start from our left hand of the gauges all the way over to the right. If you notice, I have a DEF gauge on this bus. It appears to be showing full, so we are in good shape. If we were to get down into the yellow, a light will come on, and that will tell me I have approximately five gallon of DEF left, which means it's time to get some pretty quick. My water temperature gauge, if you notice, it is registering, uh, as it is approximately 150 degrees. If I ever get over 230 degrees, I would have to shut the bus off because it is overheating. I'm going to talk about my oil pressure gauge. As long as I'm between 20 and 80, that means I'm in good shape. However, if I'm ever below 20, that means I have to shut the bus off. If I ever get over 80 on my oil pressure, that means I have to shut the bus off. We're going to gently press on the accelerator. And if you notice, the oil pump is working for the oil pressure because the needle hand moved up. RPM gauge has moved up. 
my air pressure gauge right now has moved up because it has stopped beeping. Now my voltmeter, if you look over to the where my needle hand is, as long as it's in the blue on this bus between 12 and 15, I am charging properly. If I'm ever under 12, that means I'm under charging, have a problem, we shut the bus off. If I'm ever over in the 15, or I'm sorry, let's go down to where in the 16 where the yellow is, that means the bus is overcharging, I have to shut the bus off. If you notice my fuel hand is a little bit better than three quarters of a tank of fuel at this time, you call it for what it is. However, if it ever got down into the yellow, that means I have approximately 10 gallons of fuel and red light will come on, that means I need to get some fuel pretty quick. At this time, we are going to activate the lamp check button and in doing so, we're going to check all of our lights and other items on the outside of the bus. Before we leave, if you'll notice, I have indicator lights going on and off. My red flasher yellow amber lights are coming on and off. High beam headlight has come on and it's gone off and my four-way flasher lights have come on and gone off. So now we're going to step off the bus. I only have six minutes to do this inspection, so we're going to cover a lot of areas in this detail before all the lights go off. So we'll start at the front of the bus. If you notice, my three clearance lights, they are securely mounted, not cracked and mixed broken. They are working. Big reds and big yellows are securely mounted, not cracked and missing, and they are working. Windshield securely mounted, not cracked and missing. Weather strip is securely mounted, not cracked and missing. As I look in front of the bus, my headlight assembly globe. Headlight, high and low beam, parking light, marker light, all appear to be securely working, not cracked and missing. Same on this side, my headlight hook globe assembly, securely mounted, not cracked and missing. My high and low beam headlight, my mark, uh, turn signal light, my marker light, securely mounted, not cracked and missing. No leaks underneath the bus, crossing gate securely mounted, not cracked and missing. My turn signal globe indicators on the bumper are securely mounted, not cracked and missing. They are working. Crossover mirror brackets are both securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Both crossover mirrors are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Now we make our way down to the side of the bus. If you notice, I have an inside stairwell light securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and it is working. My running lights down the side of the bus are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. They are working. Outside step lights securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and it is working. My windows are all securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have emergency windows that have got reflective decal tape for emergency service personnel. Are all securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Reflective decals on the side of the bus are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. If you notice, I got three reflective triangles on the security mounted, not cracked or missing. They are on the bus. We have other items and we'll talk about them later. Now as I make my way to the back of the bus, once again, start at the top. I got three red clearance lights that are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. They are working. My big reds and big yellows, they are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. They are working. All my windows here in the back of the bus are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Weather stripping around my windows are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Reflective decal around the emergency exit door is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My backup lights here, globes, they are securely mounted, not cracked or missing, working. Brake lights and tail lights, they are all securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Turn signal four-way hazard lights are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have a license plate light which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. And I also have a license plate that is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Emergency exit door, there's open alarm sounds, it's free of obstructions, safety latch catches, weather stripping around the door, securely mounted, and the door did open and close freely as we have just witnessed. As I come down this side of the bus, I only have to talk about something that's different. At this time, I have an exit door, which is properly highlighted with reflective decal, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My window is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Weather strip is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. The door does open. I have an alarm to sound. My door is free of obstructions. Weather stripping is good. The door safety catch latch. We close the door and bingo. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to talk about our stop sign. We'll check these lights here momentarily, which are on a separate separate switch mechanism. 
I have an STOP on a reflective decal, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. STOP on the back on a reflective decal, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. As if my wiring harnesses, they are all securely mounted, not cracked or missing. As well as my lights or assemblies are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I've got a, I have a rubber boot, a cable, powder pin, powder key, powder key here for my retraction cable, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My stop sign guard is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Driver side mirror at this time is securely mounted, not cracked and or missing. Now we're going to go inside the bus. So before I do come in the bus, if I set my wheel chalks out, I will now remove them and put them back into their compartment. My handrail securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Steps are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Don't feel spongy, free of debris and clutter. At this time, we're going to finish our lab test, so I want to make sure that my seat is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It does support my weight. Seat belt. It clicks and fits. Now we're going to finish our LAB-123 air brake test. I have to put my foot on the brake, go to drive, low gear, gently accelerate the bus till I get to about 12 to 1500 RPM. What I'm doing there is making sure that my rear brakes do, in fact, hold the bus. We will hold this for one minute. After the initial grab, if you notice, I'm about 1300 RPM. I'm going to sit here for a minute, and therefore the bus is not moving. The bus will not be moving. So we're going to let off. It is kind of hot, but I still need to close the door. Put my foot on the service brake. I leave it in low gear. Release my parking brake. What I need to do is move forward approximately five to 10 miles per hour. Apply my service brakes, and I should not have no pulling to one side or the other. At this time, I've just applied my brakes to a smooth stop. I had no pulling to one side or the other, so the brakes are properly adjusted. I set my parking brake. I go to neutral. I'm going to release the part of my seat belt, and we're going to finish up the inside of the inspection. The horn does sound. Steering play, no more than two inches in a 20-inch wheel. There I feel the pump kicking in. Okay. Now we're going to start with the windshield. My windshield securely mounted, not cracked or missing from the inside point of view. Windshield wipers are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My wiper blades are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Now as I look out my windshield, I look at my crossover mirrors. They are securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and I can see the front of the bus. While I'm also looking, I'm looking at my double nickel mirrors, which they were securely mounted, not cracked or missing a while ago, as we just kind of did a visual on them. Right now I can see out the sides of the bus, at the top of my back tires in my mirrors, and the top of the bus I see out my top of my mirrors. I have a passenger mirror here. I can see out the top of the seats. I can see out all four back glasses of the back of the bus. Uh, past my 400 foot blind spot clearance. So at this time we will continue to move on. Right now we're going to talk about our electrical switches. I have a fan on low and high. It works. I have a defrost fan, bulk fan, low, high. It works. Driver heater and defrost, low, high. Step well heater, low, high. Midship heater, low, high. Rear heater, low, high. I have a heated mirror switch which has an indicator light right here that I can't really, there it is, it is illuminated, but I really can't tell you if they're really working at this time, other than the fact that the indicator light. I have a dome light switch here, I'll click on that. There's a little dome light indicator right here on the switch, it's red in color. And as I look through my passenger mirror, all my dome lights do appear to be securely mounted, not cracked and missing, and all are working. I have a strobe light switch right here. I'm going to click it off. 
turn it back on see the indicator light it is on we'll check that strobe light here just in a little bit now I have what they call my student loading light or warning lights a flasher light click on this yellow switch I have an indicator light that has come on I can see my yellow flashing in my crossover mirror even though the sun is shining I do see the cast of a shadow I'm going to go now to where it says warning lights on my door switch my stop sign came out and if you notice my red lights are working in my mirror which tells me they're working I can see out across in my crossover mirror they are working my lights are working my cross gate it has come out and it is working and I have a cross light I mean I have a red light indicator that has come on and it is also working now I'm going to go to the door open switch and if you notice the door did open and close freely no obstructions the windows are all securely mounted not cracked or missing weather stripping on both sides as a window securely mounted not cracked or missing so we're going to close the door if you notice the door did close now I'm going to cancel it all my switches have gone off I have a four-way indicator here it has come on I can see my four-way flashes have come on in my instrument panel as well as I see them in my crossover mirror my cross gate switch we're going to do it this way I'm going to activate my override switch indicator light has come on told me that they're on and if you notice I have my lights are still working on my stop sign and in my crossover mirror and I have an indicator light there but now I'm going to hit my cross gate cancel switch I did push on that I have let go and if you notice the cross gate has come in and canceled so I turn off that now we're going to kind of come back up here talk about my right turn signal I can see up in the front hey I can see it here in my instrument panel my left turn signal I see it up here on my left side in my crossover mirror have an indicator there that tells me that they're working windshield wipers it worked on intermittent low windshield washer fluid working and they work on high okay so now we're going to turn that off I'll turn on my headlights which I really should have done the first thing but inside here you see I have a dash light panel on my instrument panel that tells me in fact that they are on so now what we're going to do is we're going to get it from the driver's seat we have to leave this bus running to check the rest of the alarms on the bus So as I do so, I got to check and make sure that all my seats are securely mounted. They are not cracked, missing, vandalizing, any of them is missing. The floor appears to be securely mounted, clean of excess debris, nothing sticking in and out of the floor. So we have checked our seats, they all appear to be securely mounted, not cracked or missing, vandalized at this time. We have made it now to my rear exit door. I'm going to raise up on the red handle. The alarm sounded. The door I push open. The door itself latched, which is free of obstructions. I push out on the rear door to release the latch and close it and refasten it. We now have a roof hatch that we must check. We're going to turn this red knob over to exit, push up on it. If you notice, the alarm sounded. I see my strobe light, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. There's the exit here is clean of debris. Latch it. We're going to leave it up for air because it's warm. <coughs> I have an emergency exit window. Raise up on the handle. The alarm sounds. I push on the window. It opens and closes freely, free of obstructions. And the window itself is labeled. We only have to do one window and one roof hatch. I do have a side exit door. 
which is free of obstructions. Raise up on the red handle. The alarm itself did sound. The door does open. The door does latch. Once again, it is free of obstructions. Push out and pull in on the door to release. And there we have it. So we know we've done that part. So as I make my way to the front of the bus, I'm going to shut the bus off. We'll turn the headlights off. Turn the bus off. Now I'm going to make my way to the back of the bus and cancel the No Child Left Behind alarm on it. I have one minute to get to the back of the bus before the alarm goes off. Push on the button. If you notice the lights did flash, that means the alarm has reactivated itself. Now as I come back to the bus, I want to make sure there's no sleeping children on the bus, uh, no suspicious packages, no stuff left behind by students. And if there were to be stuff left behind, I'd bring it up to the front of the bus, put it in the front seat, and make a notation. If I have a sleeping student, I'll need to make a call to the respective school to let them know that I have a student left behind. Now at this time, I'll take the key out of the bus and I'm gonna put it in my pocket and make sure it's with you at all times. I have a seat belt cutter which is intact, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have a first aid kit. Inside the first aid kit should be first aid items, and they are, and I need to have some spare fuses, which there's one of the spare fuses. And we're going to close this, and we're going to put this back. I have a body fluid cleanup kit. The contents inside this body fluid cleanup kit is in a sterile bag. It appears that everything is in fact intact. It has not been opened. Doesn't is not dirty and doesn't appear to have any mold buildup on that. Put that back. Now we're going to talk about a fire extinguisher. The cover that protects the extinguisher from draw, uh, drawback strings and so forth is intact, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is an ABC extinguisher. It does have the safety pin, uh, plastic tie to keep the, uh, uh, the uh, pin in place. And it is in good working operation and it has also been serviced and ready to go according to the stamp on the car. And that's it. Right now we are going to check our hood latch trap. Assembly. All we have to say is make sure it's securely mounted, not cracked or missing. So we'll go over to the other side. We'll talk about this hood latch trap assembly, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. If I bought something with me, I would stick it down in this hole, make sure there's no dirt gobblers or anything like that that might come back and bite me. Now we're going to come over on the, the driver's side, and this is where all of our fluids are at at this time, so that's what we're going to be checking. We don't have to worry about checking our transmission fluid anymore as it has been in the past. It seemed to let you some confusion. Right now we do not have to do that. However, we do our oil, and to check our oil, we'll pull it out. Make sure it's in good working order, doesn't smell burnt, no water shavings. No water or metal shavings is in the oil, doesn't feel gritty. And it is in good working operation. But I'm gonna check it just one more time. And as you notice, 
it is in good working order as it was a while ago. My oil filler tube here is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. And that's this right here. All my hoses appear to be securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any e leaks, no signs of any swollen places. This here is my antifreeze reservoir, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Uh, it is appear to be at operational level. Uh, no signs of any leaks from the hoses. We're going to kind of back up just a hair because we have so many different types of components here. Inside my frame, there is an air compressor pump, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks, and it is shaft driven. Underneath that air compressor is a power steering pump, which at this time it's hard to see because of our location. It is right underneath the air compressor. It is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks, and it too is gear shaft driven. So as we kind of come kind of make our way out, we're going to talk about the frame. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any welds uh, or buckles at this time. I'm going to talk about my power steering fluid. It's got that eyesight glass, so when I move it, <laughs> I can bump and you see the fluid move here. But if you can't move it, you check the dipstick just like your oil. Make sure it doesn't smell burnt. Make sure it's at operational level. Make sure you don't have no water shaving, I mean water or metal shavings in the oil. And that it is at operational level. And once again, does not smell burnt. So as I kind of, and I hate to keep backing up so much, but it's just everything is just as it is. Steering shaft, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Connects to my steering gear box here, securely mounted. Not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks from the hoses. From my steering gear box, I have my pitman arm, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It connects to my drag link here, which is held in place with the castle nut and cotter key. From my drag link, it goes right back here to my steering ring knuckle, which is right here is my steering ring knuckle. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It too is held in place with the castle nut and carter pin. I have a drive shaft which is underneath my leaf spring. It is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Now we're going to talk about our leaf spring. We have two brackets, the front and rear, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Leaf springs here are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My two U-bolts are securely mounted, not cracked or missing to the axle frame. I have a shock absorber securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is fully extended, no signs of any leaks. Now we have, from that point, we're going to talk about our brake line, and ABS line. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. I have a brake chamber here, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have a push rod that comes out of my, out of my uh, brake chamber. It connects to my slack adjuster held in place with the slack adjuster pin and key. No more than one inch play, which is pretty tight. I have a slack adjuster bolt, which is right down here, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Um, it is not extended. As I look inside here, which is kind of hard to see from this angle, but I'm looking inside my wheel here. It appears to be uh, securely mounted, not cracked, missing, no signs of any welds. I have a splash plate back here, and it's got a peephole in it, and I would use a flashlight to look in that peephole, make sure that there is no excessive brake dust, brake shoe particles, and make sure that, that I have no excessive uh, foreign material that may be inside that that may hinder the braking mechanism. As I kind of look inside here, I'm going to check that my inside tire wall securely mounted, no cuts and bruises or blemishes on it. It appears that I have even tread wear, um, no less than 430 seconds tire wear here. This has to be a new tire and it must match on the other side. As I look on the outside here, no cuts and blemishes on my tire wall. I look at my wheel again from the outside, securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any welds. I look in my vent hole here at my brake drum, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of discoloration. My lug nuts, they all appear to be securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Uh, no signs of any rust trails that might have said otherwise. My oil hub seal, securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. And the oil level on this little sight level appears to be at operational range. Mud flap is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. 
I am very, very short, but I have to climb, but I'm not going to climb. But you have to check your windshield washer, washer arm. Make sure that you do have tension that it is securely mounted and not cracked or missing. So at this time, we're going to move over to the other side and talk about things that are different. As we do so from this side, we're going to talk about the fan blade. Now that it has become an optional item, some examiners still want to hear us talk about the fan blades being securely mounted, not cracked or missing, which are right here. Serpentine belt, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. No more than the three quarter inch play. I have an alternator, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is belt driven, and my wiring harnesses for my alternator appear to be intact, no smelling signs of anything that got hot or burning. Water pump, securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is in fact belt driven. Uh, no signs of any leaks at this time. We're going to talk about our oil filter. Kind of hard to really see. But it is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. Windshield washer reservoir securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It appears to be full, and it also has no signs of any leaks. And at that time, that's everything under the hood. Okay, at this time, uh, anytime you are done with under the hood, close the hood, be done with it. Don't let it come back and say, hey, what about me? Close the hood and just move on. We've already talked about the doorway being clear and so forth. I have a DEF door with diesel exhaust fluid, which is locked for security reasons. Uh, it is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have a diesel, diesel fuel cap, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. The tank is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and there are no signs of any leaks. As I look down here at this side underneath the bus, which is going to be kind of hard, I have a rather extensive muffler system. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. I uh, don't see no soot build up. And the brackets to the muffler are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. The frame is still securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My drive shaft is still securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My drive shaft hangers, which is hard to see because this bus has compartment carriers. For each compartment door, you have to open up. But since there's three on this side, just have to open up one. So we'll raise up on this, this um, latch here, we'll turn it a quarter turn, raise it up. Use the secure cable. It is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and it is supporting the weight of the door. As I look in, I don't see no uh, suspicious items that don't need to be in here. Uh, the floor is sturdy, securely mounted, there's nothing sticking in or out through the door. I have three reflective triangles here. Normally you don't have to take them out to show the, the examiner, but you do have to mention that you have three reflective triangles and they are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. So at this time, we're going to refasten the door. So now we're going to kind of come back here. And I do apologize because it's hard to see with all this stuff that's in the way. I'm still looking at my frame, which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of welds or buckles. I see my drive shaft and my drive shaft hangers are still securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have my leaf spring bracket here that's securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My leaf spring and torsion bar, which are together. The torsion bar is on top of the leaf spring. It is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Now I'm tracing it back based on what the picture of the image is. I have two U-bolts that's fastened over onto the axle. They are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. And I have a rear bracket to my leaf spring and torsion bar securely mounted, not cracked or missing. I have a shock absorber which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is fully extended and not leaking. I got a rubber boot here for my air ride suspension. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing. It is fully extended and not leaking. Inside my back wheel, I've got what we had up front. We've got a brake chamber. We've got airlines, ABS line. We've got a push rod. We've got a slack adjuster. We've got a slack adjuster pin. 
to check the play on that, we have to have the wheels chalk. We have to be in parking brake release and in neutral with a large pry bar or a screwdriver. We then pull, no, it's not supposed to pull no more than one inch to make sure we have adequate play or not play. While I'm still back here, I'm going to look inside my rim and make sure I've got no um, excessive brake dust because it too has a splash plate in the back. And with the flashlight, I will look and check and make sure. Now, I did fail to mention a while ago about checking the tire pressure at the tire, uh, with the tire pressure gauge on the front tires. So with that, you have to check them the same way back here. Valve stem here, valve stem here. Use the tire pressure gauge to check your pressure. But I'm kind of getting out of context here, so I want to check and make sure that all my tire walls are what they are. Securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any cuts or bruises or blemishes. Um, I can't have no less than two 30 seconds tread wear on the back tires. I have nothing in between my duals. These are bud rims They're because they do bud together. My lug nuts, they are securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of rust trails. Axle seal uh, nuts are securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. This rim appears to be securely mounted, no cuts or welds or buckles in it. Just like the back rim of the bud rim is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any welds or anything like that. I can see part of my brake drum which is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, and no signs of any discoloration back there. All of that is really hard to see unfortunately with, with the luggage compartments that we have on this bus. So now as we continue to move back, my diesel fuel door, it is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. My cap has no signs of any leaks, securely mounted. My fuel tank is securely mounted, not cracked or missing, no signs of any leaks. As I look underneath the bus, I have a fuel tank cage. It is securely mounted, not cracked or missing. And I also have two fuel tank straps, which are securely mounted, not cracked or missing. As we move back here to the back, we've only got a couple of things to cover that we didn't mention. The exhaust here has to stick about one inch past the bumper. We've already covered everything else on the back earlier. Now we come over on this side, and we have already covered everything on this side on an earlier inspection when we checked our lamp check. One thing that was not mentioned was the double nickel mirrors. They all do appear to be securely mounted, not cracked or missing. Um, now at this time, as you're doing in your inspection, if you do fail to mention the part, you can pick it up at any time, but just don't lose your time based on, well, let's start all over. We can't start over. You have to continue with the systematic rhythm and approach.